Hello everyone. Anime set in Victorian England, with sci-fi element, is hard to come by. It also builds up a strong foundation early on. I was pleasantly surprised and excited, only to find that Unbreakable Machine Doll was just a tease. It eventually resorts to a lot of cheap fan service rather than capitalizing on a good setup. At this point, I have seen a ridiculous amount of anime, and while most of them have fan service, and there's also plenty that didn't let the naughty scenes hamper the experience. Sadly, Unbreakable Machine Doll is on the other side, the one that spent the usual shenanigans to the point of exhaustion. It did a bit more than your usual school action anime, which gave me a bit of hope. Early on, it dabbles on some mystery aspect with sci-fi background. It almost separated itself from the many other metal sonen, and I believe it has some tools to go even further. Unfortunately, there's always hindering fan service every step of the way, and this is probably one of the appeals as well. Rather than actually fully realizing the potential and use fan service for love, it does the opposite and lean heavily into the loot scenes while using the storyline as a mean to get harem and as many girly cliché as possible. The best example of this is Yaya, the main automaton of the MC, Raisin. She is overly attached and full of jealousy, which might be good for a love the first two times, but after seeing this every damn episode, it gets old. Sometimes she would do the same routine five minutes apart. Maybe it's a meta commentary of how she's programmed to do it, but I wouldn't give the series that much credit. Every time any girl comes close to Raisin, she would pout and be overly protective. I guess you can establish a relationship between machine and human this way. Then again, it would fall into the same pitfall that 80% of any sci-fi stumble into. The overused theme of sentient robot, machine become human, and all that. The series doesn't have nearly enough finesse to climb itself out of this. It's a cheap way to make the MC look good. Might as well have him save Kitten. I just don't believe in a world where machine or doll became such huge aspect of everyone's life, only this single boy treat them with appreciation like they are person, especially when most of them are built like attractive ladies. If anything, it's weird that people don't get emotionally attached to them. Anyway, Raisin and Yaya find themselves in this elite school called Walpurgis. I must admit, I like how they build this up, especially in the first three episodes. It's different from the ordinary hook, Anime is known for, but it might be enough for a good niche. However, it, it didn't really materialize into anything significant. In fact, it has one of the cliches that plagued anime for a while now, the overly flamboyant script. It sounded cool with fake elegant terminology like the evening party or Wiseman. The way the series painted the fans and cast make them sound more than they actually are. We hear a lot of jargon being mentioned, some of them are even similar to royalty title. However, it ends up as usual trick, and admittedly, they are not entirely bad, but I cannot say they have that much depth as well. I like the investigation aspect, and for some moments, Raisin actually makes some good points, slowly trying to find the truth of the case, or cases. Another element that helps is the voice acting. A couple of the characters sound exceptional. Swift and glossy, yet hides their intention well. I like the exchanges between them, even if they are usually short and most likely didn't achieve anything that complex. In fact, sometimes they are used to get the usual sondere or enticing scene, with of course the bouncing boobs. I would say 60 or 70% of the runtime is spent on this. There is so much jealous crying and sondere complaining that the actual plot takes a back seat. It would be impressive if it weren't so sad. With all the tools, there is so much more that could have been accomplished, and I'm sure they're trying for more nuanced relationship, or maybe display of trauma from the MC. However, Unbreakable Machine Doll is more interested in presenting cheap thrills. I had some hopes from the aesthetic, especially very early on. 
but even then their style of the QT stuff would take more priority. In the end, it's sufficient for some pretty visual and simple relaxing time. Also, if you want to see a boy playing with his doll while simping for Basti Lady. That's it, thank you for watching. Please leave a like and comment. Consider subscribing and share with your friends. I make three videos every week. Have a nice day, and I'll see you in the next one.